Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Fishing is Therapy. I know I've been missing in action, guys, man. I had a terrible cold for a little while, um, just over the holidays, but it's been so cold, man. I went out a couple of times trying to catch fish. So cold, the fish just weren't acting right, right? It seemed like they were locked jaw or I was going out in the rain, things like that, and this wasn't a good production for you guys. But it's 2024 now, guys, and I'm back. Um, I know a lot of guys are up north, they're iced out, it's cold. You know, you're thinking about different mods, what do you need for your boat as you come into the spring season? And I've been thinking about that for myself. Like, man, what's really essential that you need? And I wanna give you guys the top seven things that you need in your boat to upgrade it, um, to help you out on the water that'll make life much better and it made it easier for me And these are the things I've learned that now I can't go without and I think every John boat should be outfitted with these things to make life easier make organization well and Reduce safety hazards on the water. Okay, so I'll come with you and I'll go ahead through these different things And I'll also put a timestamp on each one of these items So if you feel like you can skip through just so you can see the items or you know, so you don't have repetitive repetitional items that you already have. So without further ado guys, let's get in and let's do some John Boat Therapy. All right guys, we're gonna jump in right away, man. Um, do I, I've come to this mod, this is my first mod. It is a trolling motor, okay? Preferably it has spot lock would be really good. If it doesn't have spot lock, we totally understand. Um, so if you can get the one that has the pedal option as well as the remote, that'll be really good for you. The reason why I say that, let me, let me take you on a little journey. Um, the reason why I got this when I initially got this boat, I just had the regular foot pedal one, right? 45 pound thrust one, simple one. And my issue I was having, I would have anchors when I'm out in the river, when I'm out in the lake and it starts to present a danger and a frustration because I had my anchor in the front, anchor in the back, 25 pounds each, right? And when I would anchor out, you know, you drag and you gotta hurry up and run to the front, run to the back, especially if you're by yourself. So I got tired of that. And then on lakes where it's popular throughout the summer, you're getting waked. And if you need to move out of the way from a boater, you can't, you gotta pull up the ropes and it presents a hazard where you need to get out of the way or reposition your boat so you don't get waked because I was actually anchored down and the water would splash over and I couldn't go anywhere. So I ended up getting spot lock so that I can take it out of spot lock, move out of the way really quickly, or take that motor and, tr and troll it. So I think if you're thinking about something that you want to upgrade on your boat and you have just a basic trolling motor, you should think about grabbing yourself spot lock so you can minimize those ropes. I'm not saying in certain situations you're catfish and things like that, I wouldn't bring my anchor to do that, but for safety concerns, I think it'll be much better for you to have an option to just spot lock yourself and to be able to use a remote or foot option. Just in case your battery on your remote dies, you have the foot option or vice versa. But that takes me to number two. Very, very important mod for me, especially it's cold right now. Right now, guys, it's 20 plus degrees, okay? It's 20 degrees. So I'm gonna show you why this one is important because I ran into this issue on the water and I was so grateful that I had this option. Let's go take a look at it. Everybody has one of these on their boat, right? Unless you just have a trolling motor set up. It's an outboard motor, okay? And Tahatsu is a really good brand, but let's not get caught up on brand. When you're thinking about upgrading this season, this year, or in the future, right? Don't worry about this. This is just my uh, backup marker where I know how far to back my boat up. Um, this right here, the thing I, I want you to focus on the most is having an outboard that has electric start when it's really cold. So I ran into this issue. I came out. I tried to electric start my motor, the uh, lines was frozen. And they were frozen, I couldn't get it started. I couldn't get it started, and I'm electric starting. I'm like, man, what the heck? Luckily, I had the rope start, so I can pull it and get it started. So if you're gonna think about an outboard motor and you're on a fence, so I get electric start, so I get pull start, spring for a few extra hundred dollars, and get both, okay? So if this rope ever breaks on me, I have electric start. If electric start isn't working or my batteries are dead on the water and I'm away from the boat ramp, I have the ability to pull start. Those are two things that are really, really important, okay? I found that out on my own and it was like 35 degrees. I slipped and bust my butt on the boat ramp. Sunfish Assassin knows about that. I slipped and bust my butt on the boat ramp, guys. Then I got on the water, my motor wouldn't start. So, and I was over here electric, so I'm like, man, it's my battery hookups, what is it? And I also had this option. So between those two, I was able to get off the water. Another thing that helps me out, guys, everyone should have on your boat, and I've seen a lot of guys who don't have them or maintain them, is a bilge pump, okay? Have an automatic bilge pump. 
This is an 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump. Okay, 12 volts. I always check this one before I go out on the water to make sure. Let me give you a backstory regarding that and why I think you should make sure you maintain yours. Make sure you have a really good one that can pump water. I have mine pumping over the back. Um, I was on Lake Lanier in the south here in Georgia and I was like anchored, right? And then the waves splashed all over the boat. I mean, big waves, right, from pontoon boat. Splashed all over my boat's full of water. If I didn't have an automatic bilge pump and I had a manual, I would, by the time I was fishing in the front, by the time I looked back, all of this had water here. The bilge pump clicked on, kicking all the water out, and that saved me tremendously. I just told a few guys on the Coosa River, they were on a canoe, and they didn't have a bilge pump on their canoe. And as I was towing them, the water was just sloshing all over and everything, right? And they didn't have any means, so they were just trying to use the manual pump. Guys, the manual pump is not going to work if you really get a lot of water in there. So make sure you have a quality build pump. So that's three items so far. Another one. We're in, we're in the winter right now, but we're going to get into the spring and into the summer really quick. Okay? Why did I change my John boat? When I first got this John boat, I had it all laid out the way I wanted it, and it was just metal. I was thinking about the, you know, the regular little hydro, I mean, uh, the little turf carpet that you get from the store everyone puts on or, or the, just a general all-weather carpet. Um, all of those work. But you want something to protect you from this John boat because it's aluminum and it gets really hot in the summer or just in the spring when the sun's beating down on you will burn your leg. I can't tell you how many times I've already burned my leg on the side right here, but it's very minimal. I was thinking about adding it or wrapping it around, but you want to be able to protect your boat. This hydro turf so far, and I'm not, I'm not saying you need hydro turf, it is a more expensive option, but when I get mud on this thing, I can just rinse in their beads and just runs all out. And I just drive my boat around the corner and just run it out. Um, I spilled things on here. I had guys on here with, um, you know, that, that have cigarettes or beer or anything, things spill. Look at this hydro turf, it's still in really good shape, okay? You see stains, I can just wash that off. So I wanted to show you in the real form why you need hydro turf. It helps you out in the winter. You don't slip and fall when, when your feet is wet. Um, it helps you out if you have any heat, you drop anything, you drop ashes, you drop any sticky drinks or all the blood from the game fish that you catch. So upgrade to that and it'll help you and it'll just reduce the glare of that heat bouncing off of you and hurting you. And you just don't want that wood, plywood floor and it just get all wet and you can't walk around on your boat, guys. That's another upgrade that you should have. One other one. Okay, now we at number five. Fish finder. I added another fish finder because it's a map just for mapping, but all you need is one, right? We're talking about what you need as an essential. Fish finder, why? It's going to tell you your water temperature. It's going to tell you your depth. Depth is very important when you're on the lake, when you're going for certain species. Also, depth is important so you don't run aground, right? And you get your boat stuck. You want to know what are the areas, but you're able to just map out the lake. And just having a fish finder has changed the game for me. I initially got the boat. I was like, I don't really need one. I quickly found out that I needed a fish finder because I want to learn the depths and everything, but I have the extra option of having a mapping system up here and also live scope. I'm very fortunate to be able to have that option, but just get you a fish finder simple. Make sure you have depth, water temperature, you can have time of day, and you can know how fast you're going if you ever want to do a speed test and test out how fast your boat is going. So Simple Electronics, they make these things really efficient today, and they just do very well. So. Go ahead and get you a fish finder right now. The holidays, you know, is still here. I mean, just passing New Year's, so you still can find these on sale for under 400 bucks. Go ahead and get you one. The Garmin Striker is really good. So I started off with on my kayak, and that was only 100 bucks, 110 bucks. So get you something where you can have that option. Okay. Another thing, I'm gonna go right here to the front. I have them in the back, but I also want to show you. I have them in the front. It's very important as a fisherman that you need these. So. We're going to talk about things in twofold. You need a navigation line, okay? That's very important when you leave out. So um, fishermen, we find ourselves going out early in the morning, right, and the seasons change. So when I first got my boat, I'm like, man, all right, I got the navigation light. I'm fine. That's all I need to do is just go out, and um, I'm leaving at 7 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. The sun's out because it's the summer. Well, when the season changed, I'm leaving at 6 o'clock, 6.30. I'm getting to the boat room, and it's still dark. I can't see anything. And now that's when I realized it was dangerous, but I always have a flashlight, this one right here. And I'm out here on the boat with the outboard, and I'm shining the light trying to see because navigation light is not enough. That's dangerous. I went ahead and upgraded um, to the Nylite 
uh, out, I can turn this one for at this angle, one straight forward, and we have one over here on the other side for the left side of the boat. I have, th I have two in the back as well. What those also do, guys, is serve for me when I go night fishing during the spring and summer. They, um, my back lights are angled to the water, and they, they act as um, like a green light or a light, you know, kind of like a dock light. And then all the bait fish, everything, gather underneath my boat, and I can just drop straight down the fish room, catch good crappie, good catfish, you know, good stripers using that. So for safety purposes, you should add you some lights to your boat so that you can navigate early in the morning. And if you get stuck out there and you're coming in in the evening, these have saved my butt a ton where I, I was able to avoid logs. I was able to avoid things that are really dangerous out there on the water and get back as well as go down the boat ramp safely. All right. So that's one thing you want to have. And then we're going to do one more thing. And I want to really focus in on this. This will be my rod storage. Okay. Everybody knows fishermen, we're notorious for having our rods kind of laying across on the deck here or just laying them in the boat. Well, me, I fish often with uh, one person or two people, right? And when I fish with two people, I have one, two, three, four rods. Someone else comes with me and they bring four rods. Then another person with me comes, brings four rods and people tend to just kind of toss the rods around and you're switching up, you're fishing for multi-species and you can break your rods. I've broken my rod eyes, all type of stuff. Rods are almost falling over in the water. You got one you can see on my channel, Guard Mayhem. We're running around with the rods tangled everywhere. It just was a mess. So I upgraded for the one that just goes right here. It's called Boat Buckle. I upgraded from there because I needed more rod storage. And this one right here is called Millennium Marine, okay? This one I got from Cabela's. And I really like it because it has the ability to be adjustable, right? <clears throat> when you're moving it around, let me show you guys. So you just go ahead and undo it right here. And then you can move your rod storage up this way. You can take this also and swivel it to the outside and have it hanging on the outside. So sometimes when I'm just me in the boat, I have them laying like this. I'm not going to tighten them down because I want them back that way. Here, here. And you have the ability to be fully adjustable and lift them all the way up. And these go up to about right here. So these Millennium Marine rod holders has changed the game for me. It's made it really easy, and it's easy to adjust. So when guys get in the boat, I just say, hey, put your rod right here on this. We can turn them like this, and it takes up about this much space. And we have all of our rods laying there, and we can just grab them off, go, drop the other one down, and keep going. But I normally drive down the road with them like this, and it's helped me out tremendously with keeping the boat organized, guys. So we have went over a few things. Think about this as you're... As you're you're contemplating what can I upgrade, what has been nagging me, what has been plaguing me, what's beneficial to my boat. If you have just a John boat, you have a kayak or anything like that. We're going to go over them again. Think about it. Trolling motor. Do I want to just throw anchors in the water and ropes and pull them up front and back and not kind of be stuck there if a boat comes in my way or anything? Do I want to change that? Is that a safety concern? In my opinion, I say yes. An outboard motor, do you need electric start? No. Having the ability to have rope start and electric start saves you a lot of time and energy being able to just pull that rope. You know, on a cold day, you're just yanking that rope, yanking that rope, and people often break that rope. Electric start is important. Let's use the technology and advances that we have to be able to make things more efficient for ourselves. Bilge pump, you have to have that in case you get water and get swamped. How many times do you forget your boat plug? You don't have a bilge pump? Very, very, very important, guys. Hydro turf, don't burn yourself, make it comfortable for your family. Comes up for yourself, make the water more enjoyable. Fish finder, find out your depth, everything that you need. Lights, so you can see where you're going. And rod storage, so you can keep everything organized. Let me give you one more bonus here, guys. This will be eight. This is a bonus for you. Comfortability, comfortable seats. Okay, this has made my life very comfortable. Having a seat that can take the elements, that can get wet and doesn't stay soggy, that can deal with the heat, the wind, still be breathable. I don't feel like I'm sweating on it. Has good ergonomics to my back. And I even put my Kimimoto backpack on the back of there and it fit perfectly. Having a good seat, I have three of these. I have this one, I put one here, and I have one right here where I can adjust for the middle or right up front when I want to sit in the front of my boat. So those seats are comfortable, Millennium Marine. If you can grab you one, 
Look, I've gotten and tried, you know, the other cheap receipts, trust me, they're gonna break, the foam's gonna wear out, they're gonna get flat. These don't get flat. The cushions don't get soaked and wet. So as a bonus, check out Millennium Marine Boat Seas, guys, and I think you'll be happy if you're thinking about how can I improve life on the water for me to make things more efficient, safer, you know, and just have a good time. So thank you guys for staying tuned, guys. If you really like this content, I'll do more like it. Let me know if you want to see an accessory video where I give you my accessories that I really like that you should also try out, in my opinion. But if not, guys, do me a big, big favor. I see a lot of people will check out the video and view it. But if you like the video and you comment, that helps the channel the most. And it'll really help me grow, guys, and continue to be able to do this year round. Because I really want to do this more. I want to put out more content for you guys. So give me a like, give me a subscribe, and comment and talk to me because I talk back. Thank you guys for staying tuned to another episode of Fishing is Therapy. We got that John Bo Therapy. Go ahead and get yours. Peace.